AJ Fernandez Cigars, makers of the San Latano, one of the most talked about cigars in recent years, is now offering a groundbreaking line extension, the San Latano Bull. The San Latano Bull features an extensively aged and hearty core of Nicaraguan long fillers nestled beneath an attractive Ecuadorian Sumatra wrapper. Housed in a cedar sleeve which depicts the outline of a bull, only solidifies this cigar as a full-flavored cigar. Removing the sleeve reveals a box-pressed cigar with a beautiful, oily, and smooth chocolate brown wrapper. The San Latano Bull burns nice and neat as it issues columns of smoke hitting you with a wall of spice followed by leather and cedar. This densely packed cigar intensifies in deep, rich flavors and becomes a flavor bomb halfway through, only getting better with each passing draw. Strong yet smooth and perfectly balanced A.J. Fernandez, who many have called the tobacco prodigy, has somehow pushed the already spectacular San Latino line of cigars forward with the bull. A.J. Fernandez challenges you to take on the bull, Cigar Snob's number eight cigar of the year for 2014. From the makers of the number one cigar in the U.S. in 2013, the Aging Room Quattro F55 comes yet another highly rated cigar, the Aging Room Bin Number no. 1. The Aging Room Bin Number no. 1 is a full-bodied Dominican cigar with some of the world's oldest tobacco on the market today. From the harvest of 1997, 98, and 99, the Aging Room Bin Number no. 1 starts out smooth and builds up in strength and flavor until it reaches its full potential. The Aging Room Bin Number no. 1 is for the true cigar connoisseur looking for a sophisticated smoking experience with balance, complexity, and character. Aging Room Cigars. Blending is in our DNA. M. Bombay Cigars represent the most admired cigar culture of Cuba. They select the best of the best quality tobacco to use in the aging process. M. Bombay Cigars are then rolled in Costa Rica by some of the most experienced cigar rollers, giving it a unique smoking experience. The band portrays the detailed and artistic nature of our small industry. Try the M. Bombay Casera, M. Bombay Mora, and the recently released M. Bombay Habano. M. Bombay Cigars, where the cigar is a way of life. Welcome back to the Stogie Geek Show. Just a couple of announcements I want to make. Um, first up, M. Bombay is giving away um, tickets to the Great Smoke in either, um, excuse me, the Big Smoke in either Las Vegas or New York. Um, all you have to do is go into your um, local M. Bombay retailer. Um, you can go to www.bombaytobac.com. That's fine. And, um, they uh, they are all set up to do it. You buy three cigars is all you need to do, and they hand you a raffle ticket. And they'll be raffling those off um, sometime in October there. So there's also details if you click on um, stogiegeeks.com as well as uh, cigar-coop.com um, on the M. Bombay ad, and you can get more details there. Our uh, second announcement is um, you probably if folks probably have started to see this on social media. Uh, the Stogie Geeks are going to be holding our four-year anniversary show on Friday, October 30th. Um, and we're going to do a marathon show once again in support of Cigar Rights. It's going to be an awesome, awesome show. I'm actually going to be up in Rhode Island with Paul and the crew, and I'm really looking forward to that. Um, as a um, What we're going to be doing is we want to uh, encourage some, some of our audience to kind of participate a little with us on this. Um, so what we're doing is we're kind of setting up um, a Stogie Geeks roast <laughs> is the best thing to put it, where um, you basically, uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to give a phone number out um, that will give you a voicemail, and you can leave us a voicemail. Um, and we will go through these voicemails and select uh, some of the more interesting ones. Now, yep, you know, keep, it, keep it clean, you know. <laughs> uh, no hitting below the belt, but, you know, we're big boys here. But the number, and we'll also put this up on the website uh, for if you want to leave a voicemail, yeah. 781-437-7833. Again, the number, 781-437-7833. 
So um, we are now at the time of the show uh, for our Stogies of the Week. Uh, where we, and Dave is going to participate with us this week on that. I'm very excited. Yeah, no, glad to have you here. Um, so I'll kick, I'll kick this one off since I put you on, on the spot last time. Um, and the first cigar I have is, um, and we had on episode 149, um, the, the man behind this cigar, uh, Barry Stein who came out with uh, his new incarnation of the Kilo. And I smoked the Kilo Toro. Now, the Kilo has been reblended. Um, it's now being distributed by United Cigar. And it's now being made in Nicaragua at uh, Noel Rojas' Aromas de Jalapa factory. Um, and you know, Barry talked a lot about that cigar and, and the origins, how that started as a, a, a project um, when he was at Miami Cigar. And then when he left Miami, he got to take the trademark and... It was a limited release with Miami. Now it's becoming regular production under the United Cigar portfolio. Um, it's an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper with a Nicaraguan Corojo binder. And he's got three uh, variations of Lajero in an all-Nicaraguan filler. I smoked the 6x52 cigar. Um, this cigar was positioned, at, and we smoked this on the show, but I really had a chance over the last few weeks to smoke this as well. Um, it's a powerhouse cigar. I'm going to make no bones about it. Uh, it's a strong cigar. It's not one of these cigars that's going to sneak up on you with strength. It's going to hit you with strength right on the onset of this cigar. Um, it has some really good flavors. It has a, a nice natural tobacco flavor. I think it's got some caramel qualities. It's got some grassy notes in there. Um, great sweetness that comes about with this. Um, it's not going to be a pepper bomb. It's not going to be a... Um, and at the same time, while it's a strong cigar, I think that the strength and the body of this cigar balanced each other uh, really, really nicely. Um, it's definitely a cigar not for the newbie, and it's definitely a cigar not for someone who can't handle strength. Um, like the cigar overall, um, it's, it's, worth, it's, a, it's, uh, it's worth a fiver in my book. I thought it was a very good cigar. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I saw that on your, on your list. I've had the Toro as well. Right now... I'm smoking the Kilo Robusto um, as we speak, and uh, it's interesting. Yeah, you're right. It's it's a good cigar. I would I would uh, recommend recommend it as well. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, um, I haven't smoked the Robusto yet. I've only smoked the Toros. But like I said they did a nice job with that. Great construction as well. Mm. So, Dave, what is uh, on your list? Well, I'm starting off now. This is a cigar that I had uh, for Will, when Will came on the show and did. Coop's Corner. Will comes on once a month to kind of go over the latest in cigar news, and we call it Coop's Corner. He's nice enough to do that. And the cigar I put to the last episode is the Tatuaje, uh, the Federal Cigar, the 90th Reserva. Now, I gotta get my notes over here. So this is a 7 and 1 fourth by 50. Uh, people may know this as a 109 the uh, dip the Diplomatico uh, Bushido is the same uh, Vitola, um, so it's sort of a it's kind of like a Churchill, but it has like a little like miniature uh, taper at the head. Um, made for Federal Cigar in 2011, wrappers Connecticut Broadleaf, binder and filler in Nicaraguan, uh, made by my father. I love this cigar. This I love this cigar. I think Pete Johnson does full body cigars very well. Um, I found that this was had a lot of body to it. Had a great rich coffee and spice at the end of the finish. Um, in the middle of the cigar, I got some caramel and like a plum flavor, like more of that dark fruit sort of flavor. Very full body, very rich, wonderful depth. Um, I really, really love this cigar. And uh, for me... This is a Fight Chuck Norris cigar, this uh, 90th Reserva by Tatuaje. It is wow. just, it's that plum flavor. It's just this this really rich, dark fruit flavor that you don't get in a lot of cigars that just hits me really, really well. And and you could smoke it all the way down to the nub. I love this cigar. H have you had this one, Will? Um, I've had the Rosado. I have not had the Reserva. They made a Rosado one as well, um, which was a very good cigar. You know, those, those, um, those 109s uh, that were for Federal, they're probably some of the most sought-after um, limiteds. Today. You know, Pete Johnson, when it comes to these shop exclusives, I think he's still got the handle on the market right now more than anybody. And that's just probably one of those bucket list cigars for a lot of Tatawai people. 
Yeah, and I have to thank um, Brett Smith, listener to the show, for sending me this cigar. Uh, so thank you, Brett. I've been aging it and waiting for a special time, and that was the last show that I had with Will. And it's just, it's a lot. It reminded me a lot of the the Wet Pack, the Double D Wet Pack. Um, just great dark sweetness that I really loved. Love this cigar. Excellent. You know, I have a Tatawahe too, um, as well. Um, I smoked the, uh, and I'm in, in this. Uh, I got a couple of these from Seth from Seth Humidor. Um, who had a few of these aging, and they're hard to find as well, but um, they're the Tatawahe Avion 13 Double F. Um, so if folks weren't, I mean, the Avion line was basically an offshoot of the Fausto line in that every year he came out with a different box press perfecto, and it was based on the Fausto blend. So he came out with different sizes, and there's an Avion 11, an Avion 12, and an Avion 13. Now, in the middle of making the Avion 13s, uh, he was working on the blend, which is the uh, it uses the Ecuadorian Habano wrapper. Um, in the middle of production, Pete Johnson decided to change gears and create a uh, broadleaf version of that. Um, so he decided it was going to be broadleaf, and um, that became the Tatawai 13 uh, Reserve, Avion 13 Reserva. But he already had some of these Habano ones made up, so he bundled them up. He had about uh, he had about seventy five hundred already produced, and uh, he sent he, he shipped them out as a limited edition. Um, and so this is um, this cigar actually is a six and seven eighths by fifty two box press perfecto. There's, there's there's different sizes of them. Um, I had actually been underwhelmed by the Avions um, prior to this release, and I had. Um, this one actually became my favorite of the Avions, and even now, this is uh, a couple years later, these are really good cigars. They're not the most complex cigars, but they're bold cigars, cocoa flavor, earth, some spice. Um, it, it's a strong cigar. It's another full-strength, full-bodied cigar. Um, I found the construction on these to be very good, where the Avion 11s, I, I really had some construction issues with, with that Perfecto. Um, it's a, it, again, it, um, this is a good cigar. Definitely, uh, I put it as a box split. Um, I'd say if you can find some of these still around, um, smoke them. I think it's a real enjoyable uh, smoke. And I think it's like I said, it is my, I even liked it better than the Reserver, which I'd have more as a, a fiber here. But that, good cigar, um, box split. Mm, nice. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep the Pete Johnson train rolling with my, with my next cigar. And I smoked the the Latelier ER13 um, in the beginning of the show, and now I'm going to talk about the La Mission, the new one from Latelier that was unveiled at IPCPR. Um, it's a box pressed. Uh, f- I smoked the 1989. So he, so La Mission, um, it's a wine, it's a wine, and the sizes are named after the hundred, the years of the hundred point ratings for the wine. So those are the Vitola names. So I have the one, the 1989, which is a five and an eighth by 54, box pressed. Uh, Wrapper is a Mexican San Andreas, binder and filler, Nicaraguan, uh, Sainte Spiritus tobacco is used. Um, I was ex- I was really excited for this cigar um, because I like the Latelier line. So I'm just excited for anything new with Latelier. Um, much like the other cigars that I like from Tato from Pete. Uh, rich, lots of body, spice, has a rich tobacco flavor, burn and draw, excellent, develops like a dark syrupy sweetness with a nice cinnamon aroma, uh, it's rich and smooth, just everything you want in a cigar, um, I love that dark molasses note, um, I can really see with this cigar the connections he makes between cigars and red wine with the body and the structure of this cigar, uh, I think... The one, the one thing about it is I found near the end of the cigar, I had to make a lot of corrections, and the burn and everything was sort of just going crazy. It's not to the Paul syndrome level, but it just it, it, it needed a lot of, a lot of uh, babysitting in the final third. The flavors in the final third were still really good, but the actual cigar itself, you needed to watch it a bit more. Um, so I went, a, I went a box split on this cigar. I think it's a very solid cigar. And I'd like to try the other Vitolas, but I went a, a box split on it. Yeah, you know, um, Stogie Sand has been talking a lot about this cigar. Um, and it's actually been a cigar that's starting to get back-ordered here. It's doing very well. 
he was telling me the 1959 was the way to go, which is the Robusto. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I, so I have not smoked this cigar yet, although I did basically tell Stogie Santa um, on my last cigar order that I just made from uh, Mr. J's, I told him basically to, to put a few of these in. Cause I have not been able to track them down in Charlotte yet. Yeah. Um, so, but they're doing, they're doing, uh, extremely, extremely well. I think, I think too, I think if I've read correctly, I think there might be some other, uh, cause there's three Vitolas right now. Um, and I think he's going to release some more as time goes on. It sounded like um, that that was the plan. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, apparently it's, it's, uh, this, this, um, is getting a lot of good press from, I mean, people I've talked to with it, uh. But in the consensus I've heard is that Robusto is, is the best size. Okay. Yeah. No, but it's really solid. Like I said, uh, a great cigar. Things start to sort of go sideways in the, like near the end. But I mean, it's, it's great. It's just great flavors. Solid cigar. Yep. My next cigar um, comes from uh, Nomad. Um, and it's part of the new Nomad Therapy line, and it's the Nomad Therapy uh, Maduro Toro. Um, I'm, I'm very, I am very excited to hear about this. Will I want this cigar so bad? It, it's a cigar you want to get. Um, so you know, I, if you go back to episode 111 of Stogie Geeks, uh, we had Fred Rui on, and um, one thing I asked Fred Rui is, "You're missing a Maduro in your um, in your profile in your in your portfolio," and he was kind of saying, "Yeah, you know, it, talking about." Uh, his journey kind of getting into blending, he felt he wasn't ready at the time. This is over a year ago, this interview. Um, it looks like now he is ready. He released um, a line of cigars called Therapy, which come in uh, three wrapper options, a uh, Therapy Connecticut, a Habano, and the Maduro, which I'm going to talk about. Now, they're not just... They're three distinct blends, all made out of A.J. Fernandez, but they're not just... Um, he took a wrapper and put it on the same binder and fill, so they're all unique. Um, this has a Pennsylvania broadleaf wrapper, um, a Jalapa binder, and Nicaraguan fillers. And if you're familiar with A.J. Fernandez when I made, you know, A.J. Fernandez really is one of those folks who, under, you know, he's really worked well with the Pennsylvania broadleaf. That's really been his his forte. Um, and, you know, anything coming out of there right now is really, um, I've, I've really liked his Pennsylvania broadleafs. And, and it's, it's a wrapper that I tend to have hit or miss, but when it comes out of A.J. Fernandez, it, I, it's always a hit with me. Um, and the thing about this also is, you know, this cigar, it's, it's sold in trays. It's, it's, the trays are refilled with bundles. Um, but this is, no, this is a premium cigar through and through. Um, it, is a, it gets you all those great Pennsylvania broadleaf qualities, the mocha flavors, the earthy flavors, that Maduro sweetness is in there. Um, there's some pepper in there. Um, it, it, it's it's a it's a great one. Now he ab it was kind of positioned more as a full smoke. I didn't quite get this as a full smoke. I kind of said it was more fuller than maybe the other therapy cigars, but it was maybe strength wise in the medium range, and it's really uh, medium bodied mostly too. It kind of goes to medium medium to full bodied towards the end of it, but uh, it's a 7.95 cigar. Um, and he, this is a really good Maduro, um, and I'd encourage folks to check this one out. Um, it's one of, it's, it was a real surprise. I didn't, exp I didn't know what to expect with this cigar. And, you know, maybe sometimes being sold in the bundles and trays, it kind of put an impression on me. Um, but, but it, like I said, this is a premium cigar through and through. You get that Pennsylvania broadleaf flavor, box worthy cigar. Um, if you assume it's sold in boxes, I'd get twenty of these. I'd keep them around. Wow, that's that's exciting to hear you say that, Will. Because I I really want to hunt this down. I was really excited about this line when he introduced it because I love I really like his stuff. So it's good to hear that. Yeah, he did a very very nice job with that cigar. Um, it's really worth checking out. I have a cigar. Uh, one of them I smoked the Kentucky Fire Cured from Drew Estate, and I had the. Um, Chunky, which is a 4x46. I've had the Fat Molly, which is a 5x56 in the past. And I wanted to revisit it, check out a different uh, Vitola. Uh, these come in, in, in bundles of 10. Um, they're sort of wrapped in that kind of like uh, butcher paper sort of wrapping. Um, it's Fire Cured San Andreas. Uh, other Fire Cured tobacco in the filler and things. I, I couldn't really find what the exact tobaccos were. 
There's a number of Atollas in this. I think there might be six or seven in the KFC line. Yeah, they've expanded um, it quite a bit now. Yeah. Uh, I think, I mean, it had a really good charred meat flavor, some sweet wood notes to it. Um, like with other Drew Estate cigars, draw, burn, construction, we're really good. No issues there. Pretty pretty good, um, in my opinion. Uh, lots of big smoke, like you expect from a Drew Estate cigar. Uh, I think it was a good change of pace cigar. The, the, the issue I had with it, Will, is that it's it seemed to be a bit one-dimensional for me. Like, those charred meat and sweet wood notes are very good. They're kind of barbecued flavor, but it didn't really change up a whole lot. I mean, that flavor is pretty consistent, but I didn't find a lot of nuance to it. Um, for example, like, I would reach for, like, the Debonair Seguita or the Camacho... Uh, barrel aged, both of which have that kind of charred meat flavor, but they have a bit more complexity to them. Um, like I said, it's a good change of pace. I put it at between a try, try one and a fiver. Like, I think I would have a five of this chunky. It's like half an hour smoke. It's a good change of pace if that's, if that's something you're into. Um, if you really like that sort of charred meat uh, sweet wood sort of flavor. You might want to get more, um, but I would try one first and see how you go. Because for me, although they do that flavor really well, it just didn't have the complexity that I was looking for. I've had that, and I, I'd agree with your assessment spot on um, where you rated it and, and how you described it. You know, with these fire-cured cigars, um, they all basically you're trading in the complexity when you put that fire cured tobacco in um because it is it is more dominant um yeah. so that's what's going to happen i mean that that's pretty much been my assessment of it is i don't know how you get around that maybe especially because they're using part of it as the wrapper even but i, I would kind of agree with you on that um but i didn't find sim what she is um Black or George Rico's American Puro, good cigars, but again, I didn't find them to be overly complex. I found them something different. I um, mean, all three of those yeah. fire cigars bring something different to the table. I mean, I I like it for the I like the fact that it exists in the sense that it adds diversity to, you know, what you're looking for in a shop. Like it, you know, it gives you something else to try. So I like that they tried something with it, tried something different. Um, and if you really like that fire cured. That, that flavor is consistent. So if you like that flavor, you might buy like a ton of these, a box, and just chew through it. For me, I would re I would reach for that debonair Seguita or the Camacho because it has that flavor, but it has some other sweetness and other complexity to it. Um, but yeah, so that's why I had it where I had it. Nope, oh, good, good. Um, my next cigar, actually, we talked about this with Tom Wazuka, um, so I won't go through all the, the background. Um, you can catch Tom's interview with that, which we recorded uh, earlier on. Um, and that's the Asylum 33 in the uh, five and a half by 46 Corona Gorda size. Um, overall, uh, this is, uh, it's, it's a little more dialed back for an Asylum cigar. You know, I know for the most, most of the Asylum portfolio is in that medium to full, to full range. This one's a classic medium cigar. It's a Honduran Puro. Um, and it's got some really, really uh, nice notes to it. You know, it's got some sweet natural tobacco. You're going to get some of those earthy Honduran flavors. Um, there's a little bit of a, a bready component to this cigar. Um, it's uh, got a lot of change-ups. So the flavors are going to change up quite a bit. I think it worked real well with that Corona Gorda size. Um, it's, a, as, as t it's, one of the, it's a $10 cigar for a Corona Gorda, so it's a little higher in the Asylum uh, portfolio price point-wise, as Tom pointed out. Um, age, Tom talked about aged tobacco. There was no signs of youngness with this tobacco. Um, I am curious to see what long-term aging will do to this. And I can't say if it's going to be positive or negative. I don't have a, a gut on that yet, but it smokes really well now. Um, and, um, I think the size in that blend was kind of ideal. So I gave it a box split. Nice. Now I have to check. I haven't checked out any asylum so i'm due to come to the states in a few months so i'll have to i'll have to pick some up yeah definitely uh like i said there's a lot we talked about it. he's got an enormous portfolio uh they've done yeah and uh 
before I get into my next cigar, are you are you a Giants fan, Will? Or are you more a Jets guy? I'm a Giants guy. Well, I just want to give you an update that they oh, are crushing the crushing Redskins at the moment, twenty five to six. America's team is back, crushing America. You know <laughs> but we, I'm never gonna give up because we've blown two leads in the last. <laughs> I'm gonna make a comment well, here. When everyone abuses Tom Coughlin and says his job's in jeopardy, <laughs> that's when he turns it around. Well, if if they drop this lead, will I mean, th- just shut it down. Like, just everybody turn your helmets and playbooks in because they're up twenty five to six. So if Cousins beats you now, you got problems. That's right. But uh. <laughs> but. The, the next cigar I have is uh, is one of my go-to cigars. It's Paul Stulak. I think you've had this blend too, Will. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, uh, it, it's a Paul Stulak Red Screaming Sun, and this is the Toro. This is the Broadleaf, uh, right? This is the Broadleaf. It's a 6x56 Connecticut Broadleaf wrapper, binder, Sumatran, and the Nicaraguan filler. I love this cigar. I love it. I Great burn draw. Construction's excellent. You get coffee, tobacco sweetness, lots of body, lots of spice. You get some cream, a great, a wonderful richness to it, good balance. It's complex all the way to the end, which I appreciate. It's even the final third, you're getting new flavors and it's still complex. Um, there's lots of atolas in this. Um, for me, it's close to Bell of the Ball. I would say Bell of the Ball in this blend is the Lancero, but that's a limited, so I don't know if people, a lot of people can get that, but that Lancero in the Red Very good cigar. Very good cigar. Oh. So for this, for the, for, the, for the Toro, and I love all of Paul's stuff, really, uh, but I would say this is a box purchase, easy. Like, I could buy a box of these Toros and just, like, smoke them every day. It's a great blend. I love this cigar. It's really good. We had Paul on last year, um, and he's uh, got. I love the white label, too. I mean, that's the red and the, the the red and the white label are just fantastic cigars. Yeah, so people should uh, check this out. Like I said, it's a great cigar. Lots of complexity. Um, his whole line construction is really good. So yeah, this the Red Screaming Sun. If you're in, if you, it's a great Connecticut broadleaf. And if you can find. The Lancero, it's at West Side Humidor. If you could find that, that cigar is out of this world. Uh, but it's a limited, so I didn't really want to review that one. I would, the Toro is more uh, regular production. Excellent. I got one more. Um, and it is um, a TAA cigar made by Casada. It is the Casa Magna Domus Magnus II um, Hadrian. Um which is named for the Roman Emperor Hadrian. Um, now, what they did with this cigar is, it's you know, what I like about this cigar, and I've been very, very critical of the TAA releases, a lot of them, because I felt that a lot of them weren't really bringing something different to the table. Some of them do, but some of them I don't think have. This is, without a doubt, a one-of-a-kind shape cigar. And I didn't, this, it will be up on the Stogie feed, but it's already up on Cigar Coop if you want to check it out. Um, this cigar is, um, they did a cigar called the Solomon Press last year, which was rounded at the ends and box pressed in the middle. I uh, heard of that cigar. I've heard of that. Yeah. Yep. So what they did with the Hadrian is they flipped it. It's rounded uh, in the middle and box pressed at the ends. Um, how, the best way. How does, I, that, how, how does that smoke? Like that just seems. <laughs> it looks how like does a, that burn? It looks like the cigar's pregnant. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's all I can tell you. But it's a cool-looking cigar, right? Um, I'll say this. I had a couple of instances where it did. I did get a wrapper crack on it. Um, in fact, in my review, you'll see there's a crack. It didn't really affect things too much other than it cosmetically, it seemed to get through it okay. Um, overall, I thought it smoked well. It's not, I would say, the best uh, blend I've had in the Domus Magnus II. But it's a very good blend. Um, I've enjoyed the Domus Magnus 2s quite a bit. Um, it gave some really good flavors in there. Um, got, you get a nice earth, uh, some nice earth notes, some nice chocolate, which brings some sweetness in there. Um, there's some white pepper you're going to get. There's a nice creamy finish on there. Um, it, it never got rough or harsh. Like I said, it did. It, where, where I got the crack in the same place both times it's after it got through the rounded part and was going back to the box press part right, um right. it cracked it was it was a minor crack i was able to kind of 
uh, get through it. Um, but you know, I had a good draw. I mean, the draw was. I was wondering how this would draw. Um, it um, it was an open draw. It wasn't uh, a loose draw by any means. Um, medium to full in strength and body. Um, you know, like I said, it's an it's if you're it's a cigar I definitely would check out uh, if you like the Domus Magnus two blend. You, um, it's not the like I said, it wasn't. I love the um, the Trajan that came out last year, which is the D shape one they did. They do a lot of different unorthodox sizes with this line, um, but it's a box split in my book. Cool. I just got one more that I'll close out with. The one that I had for the interview I did, the guest DJ I did with uh, Colin this morning. And that's the uh, Roma Craft Intemperance BA21 AWS. Now, this is one, um, this is six and a half by 44 Lonsdale. Got a Brazilian Ara Paraca wrapper, Indonesian binder, and the filler is a mix of Dominican and Nicaraguan. I love what Skip does with that Brazilian Ara Paraca. I love that tobacco. Um, rich coffee and chocolate. You get a bit of chili spice, I call it, because. It's not like pepper, but at the end of the finish, like your lips are all numb sort of thing. It's hard to explain, but I really loved it. I mean, it's sort of like if you eat, you know, chili or, or, or Thai food or something. Um, it's a, it's full in every respect. So full body, a lot of strength, a lot of flavor, uh, mellows out as it goes on. And you get a bit of spice, a bit of chocolate, coffee, some earth. Uh, this cigar for me is sort of everything I like about Roma Craft. Rich flavors, a lot of depth, amazing construction. Uh, I think it's a very unique cigar. A lot of the flavors you get in it, um, you won't get find in many cigars. Um, very smooth, well-balanced. Uh, both an aggressive cigar with the strength, but also a refined cigar in the balance. Uh, I win a box split on this cigar. It's a great, great Lonsdale cigar. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So thanks, Dave. That was a... Uh Appreciate you participating. It was fun doing uh, Stogies of the Week with you. Um, to, I'll wrap up a couple of things. Um, first up, our prize for tonight. Um, I'm gonna the prize pack tonight is a five pack of PDR cigars. Uh, it's a sampler of uh, PDR. It comes with a ashtray and a T-shirt. You get with that. Wow. Um, and the question is, um, which was uh, which was the cigar? Um, in Asylum, okay, that got the top 25 rating in Cigar Aficionado. And you have to name the cigar and the size. Um, Good question. You, yep. You can email that to the show at stogiegeeks.com. And uh, I will handle getting you that the PDR t shirt and um, the sampler. Um, so, you know, Dave. Once again, um, thank you so much for uh, pitch pinch hitting tonight. Um, we'll have to do this again. We will soon. I know we will. Uh, no, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me. I uh, I appreciate the opportunity. It was a lot of fun. Yep. Um, you know, thanks to the guys in the studio um, as well. Um, you know, just reminder. Um, you can check. Uh, yep. Um, you know, as far as um, check out our reviews on Cigar Coop at um, cigar-coop.com. Um, we also have um, Stogie Geek Shorts, where you can, um, you know, check out. Um, we have Stogie Geeks where we talk about one, um, we talk about one cigar, one topic, and, um, you know, you can check that out. We have our Stogie Geeks News as well. So you can check that out. Um, Paul's got some Stogie Geeks 101s. Check all that out on our YouTube. Um, and then a reminder again, um, the number to leave a voicemail for us for the four-year anniversary show, 781-437-7833. Again, everybody, uh, thank you so much. Dave, thank you. Tom Wazuka, thank you. Nick and Chris in the studio, thank you. Uh, we'll see you next week uh, where our guest will be Santana Diaz from DeCrossier Cigars. 